So, uh, what is a binary? Get the right window up. What is binary and linear search? So, I'm going to talk to you briefly here about what they are, how to decompose the steps of the binary search algorithm, and then lead you on hopefully writing some pseudocode. And then in the next video after this, I'm just showing you how to program the algorithm unless you figure it out for yourself. Um, this article is linked below the medium article as always article, but it's also got um, past paper questions in at the end so you can test your knowledge so you know how to answer the OCR questions and I put the mark scheme as well so you can model answers, but do the questions before you look at that. Um, right, so <laughs> two types of search. Binary and linear search. Linear search is you have an array and you have seven items in it and you need to find the number 39. So it takes you one, two, three, four, five steps. You have to look at every place in the array and until you find the thing that you're looking for. The time complexity of that is big O to the N, which means it's linear, which means as the number of items increases, so the time steps increases at the same rate. The space complexity is O to the 1, that means it's constant. If you have seven items, you're always going to have seven items. You don't need any more space. Um, this is the graph. This is what O to the N looks like. It's that line that goes right through the middle as the input or N increases, so the time or the number of operations will increase linearly. That's linear search. It's not very efficient. It's not very good because um, uh, you know, unless you have a very small array and the thing you were looking for is right at the beginning, you're not, it's going to take you a while. But if you have a very huge, big amount of data, what you need is a solution, an algorithm like binary search. It is a divide and conquer approach. It divides the problem in half. How does it do this? Well, imagine we've got this array here, 15, uh, um, you know, all these different numbers here. We're looking for number 75. So if we did linear search, it would take seven steps. We'd have to go through everything in the middle, everything in the array. But if we use this binary search, we basically have to hold a couple of things in our head. We hold the lower bound or the left pointer and the upper bound or the end of our array. And that's our search space, L and R, right? And we take those positions. Um, so it's position zero here and position uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 here, we add them together and then we divide them by 2. We get the average. You find the midpoint. And the midpoint here is 0, 1, 2, 3. So 0, 1, 2, 3. That's our midpoint, 6 divided by 2. The midpoint here is 3. Um, the thing at index 3 is 36. Now, the precondition of binary search is that the array it must be in order. If the array is not in order, you cannot do this. So if we go here and we look at the midpoint and it's 36, if the thing that we're looking for, number 75, it's greater than 36, therefore we know that we're never going to find 75 in that part of the array, so we can throw it away, right? And then what do we need to do? Well, we need to uh, basically update where we're going to search in the array. So we need to update our, our lower bound or our left pointer and we update it to be the index of the midpoint plus one, right? And then we're able to search from the lower bound to the upper bound. Um, and we basically apply the same steps again. We find the midpoint, we look at what's in the midpoint. If the thing we're looking for is not in the midpoint, is it bigger, is it smaller? If it's bigger, look in the top part of the array. If it's, if it's smaller, which we haven't considered yet, look in the bottom part of the array. So say, for example, we were looking for 15 and, um, and we jumped to the midpoint and it's 36. Um, we know that 15 is less than 36, so we can get rid of this bit of the array. So this time we would not be updating the lower bound or the left pointer, but we'd be updating the upper bound or this right pointer here, the right part of the array. And how, what would we update that to? Well, we'd update that to the midpoint minus one, so we'd search that space there. So that's the uh, basic steps of binary search. Um, time complexity of it, it's an O log N problem, which is good. 
if you look on the graph here, O log n is that curve that shoots up quite quickly there and then flattens out. So it doesn't matter how many things we add into our array, um, it's not going to get that much worse. And you think about it, every time you perform a, an iteration of binary search, you're halving your search space. If you've got a billion items, you go from a billion to 500 million, you drop 500 million. Then it's 250 million and so on and so on until like yours, you know, to, until you found the thing that you're that you're looking for. So it massively reduces the number of steps you have to take to, to find it. Again, it's space complexity is O to the one, which is constant. So just, re just remember that linear, a binary search, space complexity is constant. Um, and then their time complexities, because that is a question that I put as a um, past paper question at the end. They do ask you sometimes about that. <coughs> right, so what I want you to do now is to practice this out. Then. So go and get some uh, pit bits of paper um, uh, and, and make like say seven numbers and then uh, put seven, uh, put them in order. Um, so it doesn't have to be one, two, three, five, six, seven. It can be any any numbers, but they have to have you have to have seven separate numbers. And they have to be in order of an array. Um, and then what you need to do is you need to create this table here. So when you're trying to figure out the steps of an algorithm like this or a piece of code, the best way you can do it is by creating a trace table. Write down all the variables that are in your piece of code or program. And then every iterative, every iteration or every step, write down the values that are in them. So I'll take you through this one. You can copy me and do this with your numbers if you like, and with your chart, and then do it with a different set of numbers. So we've got this array, it's in order. Remember, binary search must be in order. The lower bound is going to be zero. The upper bound is going to be zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, the midpoint. Is the upper bound plus the lower bound divided by two? It's three. So it's going to be zero, one, two, three, 18. What, what number are we looking for? Let's say we're looking for 96. Have we found it? Well, when we go to index three, it's 18. So uh, false. Um, so then what are we going to do? Well, we need to compare. We need to say, is the number we're looking for 96 greater than or equal to le or less than 18? It's greater than. Therefore, we're going to need to update this lower bound to be the midpoint plus one, three plus one, but the lower bound becomes four. Um, the new list that we're going to be looking through is going to be this space here. It's kind of helpful to write that out as well. So or at least when you're sort of trying to work out what's going on in the algorithm, then you can see the upper bound is going to stay the same as six. The midpoint of six and four is six plus four divided by two is 10. Now, when I show you the code, and I'll briefly talk about that here in a minute. Uh, the, the way OCR calculate the midpoint is a little bit different, um, but I'll discuss that in a minute. But it, essentially, it gets you to the same place. But um, so this um, so four plus six is ten divided by five divided by two is five. Um, we're still looking for ninety six. We jump to index zero, one, two, three, four, five. Have we found it? No, we have not. Um, is it greater than or less than? It's or is it that for, no, it's not it's not index five. Um, it's greater than. So we're going to need to update the lower bound to be the a midpoint five plus one, which is six. The upper bound is six. Um, and then we're going to go to index six. And then there we go. We found it. So the search space would after that loop there would become the 96. And that's the thing that we're looking for. We found 96. So the, the midpoint of six and six is um, six. So, you know, there is nowhere else to search. Um, one of the things that you notice in the pseudocode of this algorithm is that uh, you, some, you need an exit condition. So how do you get out of this loop? At what point do you say the thing that you're looking for is not in the list? Well, if we did not find 96 when the upper and the lower bound are the same, 
And then um, if we then had to do another iteration and um, and say it was greater than, and then say, for example, the, the lower bound suddenly became uh, greater than the upper bound, we could be confident that we've looked in every place in the array and we're not going to find it. And in that condition, we will quit doing this, this uh, loop and we'd say we have not found the item. But in this case, we have. So the best way you can practice algorithms is to do this with a different set of lists and the numbers in front of you and write down the steps like that. Um, yeah, so once you've done that, um, if you need to spell this algorithm out to you a little bit more, I suggest you have a look at this flow chart here and maybe try and create your own flow chart. And that's probably something you've learned in GCSE. Um, because flow charts are very good with algorithms. You've got processes here, the rec on its side rectangle, trapezium. Um, they're the sort of the inputs and things. I'm going to input something. Um, and then you've got the, the, the diamonds that are, are triangles. Um, and then you've got the uh, yeah, these um, the rectangles of processes or or, or, step or things that you're doing. Um, like, for example, calculating the midpoint, changing the endpoint, changing the start point. Um, but if you think you understand the steps, try and write out some pseudocode. So we, we're basically trying to loop over these, uh, also look at the steps that I've written out here as well. Um, from these steps and what from what I showed you, you should be able to at least write out some pseudocode, right? You know what you need to do on each each iteration. So you're going to have to loop over a certain amount of code um, until you found the item that you're looking for. And to loop over things, we can use while loops, for example. And the condition of the while loop is essentially that the mid lower point is never going to be greater than the mid point. Um, this is the pathway progression, which you can have a look at, but it would probably be better for you to try and write out the pseudo code. And then also to go and look at the next video linked in this video, probably around about now, on how to program it. Um, and in that video, I basically program this piece of pseudocode here that they've given you in the, in the um, exam paper question. And then you can come back to that and look at this.